business. So yeah, um, I'm Zara and I've been an optician for just over 25 years now. Uh, I've worked everything from corporate to independent opticals and then I decided to do something on my own. I love the field, I love what I do, I love helping people. Um, however, I wanted something more. I wanted to be able to, um, I wanted to be able to really help people. And the one thing that they don't have enough of is, is, um, is that time. Mm -hmm. So I thought, how about um, bringing the optical shop to their home? Fantastic. And that's where I were on the go was born. And uh, it started, uh, I, I started it six years ago now. Wow, good stuff. So it's been six years. Uh, oh. And I absolutely love it. Absolutely. So somehow we lost your presentation. Yes, I see that. And I, I tried it all this morning and it was working. So I'm okay. not too sure what's happening. Okay. So let okay, me just... Here we go. Okay, perfect. I can't get it to go into uh, full screen mode. Okay. So can you go up to the top right hand corner where it says present? And let's yep. see what happens when you click on present. No, it's just getting ready to download that. So just click on present. And let's see if it goes in present mode for us. And if it doesn't, then what we'll do. There we go. Excellent. Great job. We're all learning with you, hon. We're all in the same Thank place. you. <laughs> so the only thing I don't, oh, there we go. All right, we're good to go. So yeah, I've been doing eyewear on the go for about six years. Um, it's actually a very unique concept, but it's actually a very rewarding, rewarding one. Um, I know the difference when I've worked in a store and I've worked for someone. I don't necessarily have the time to connect with each client and uncover their needs. I also have pressures from whoever I'm working for to make a sale. Mm -hmm. So not necessarily the client's best interest at heart. Uh, I'm in your home. Uh, it's a very relaxed atmosphere and we actually um, talk about your needs. And then we find lenses and frames to meet those needs. And so far, it's been a great experience. Um, I'm all about building relationships and not necessarily making a sale. And uh, I'm at a point where most of my clients are now friends. And it's a very relaxed and comfortable way to um, experience eyewear. So what we're going to talk about today is uh, why you don't wear your uh, heels uh, to the gym. We have specific shoes and handbags and clothing that we wear for certain tasks. However, when it comes to eyeglasses, I always find that we only have one pair. And I understand there is a cost involved and there is a sticker shock when it comes to that. However, we have no problem spending a couple hundred dollars on a pair of running shoes, which we use some people every day, some people occasionally. Um, but the, the same is not applied when you do your eyeglasses. So I really want to talk about um, why it's important and number one. And number two, um, how it benefits you, how it makes your life so much easier when you're wearing a task specific lens and whether uh, whatever your task may be and we'll go through different scenarios mm -hmm. can i just have a show of hands of how many people wear glasses right now since grade eight <laughs> okay and how many of you are into progressives <sighs> progressive is, is a bifocal that lets you do everything distance reading intermediate all of that stuff I, I was, it was suggested to me in my last prescription and I chickened out because I just heard stories about people like falling and tripping and I so yeah. regret it now because I'll be honest, when I'm at my computer, I'm wearing little cheater glasses on top of my glasses to see. So How attractive is that? Yeah, well, <laughs> thank God I work from home. <laughs> attractive but it, it's also cumbersome and it's, it's an extra added weight and you're not getting the best vision so you have every you have eyewear for everywhere basically you have your everyday eyewear which Christine was talking about she wears them every day it's the pair that you put on when you get up in the morning and probably take off when you go to bed at night and you do everything with it then we've got work glasses these are task specific for the type of work that you do We've got recreation glasses, depending on what kind of sports uh, you play or any other um, needs that you have, whether it's swimming or diving or um, any, any sort of recreation activity, cycling. Hobbies, there's a lot of people that are into hobbies right now, especially now that we're home. We've got bakers, we've got planters, we've got uh, people who are knitting and knitting clubs. So any of your hobbies and then other needs. Other needs would, would include 
um, something that's not mentioned right now or a task specific for a certain type of occupation that you may have, like um, a plumber or an electrician. So right there, we've, uh, we've uncovered a, a bunch of needs. And part of the consultation when I come over is we talk about your typical day. What's a typical day like? What's a typical weekend like? All right. So there's many different types. Whoop, went too fast there. Come on, there we go. So glasses come in different, the lenses come in uh, various different focal points. The most common is your single focal point, which gives you one focal point throughout the whole lens. It doesn't matter where you look out of the lens from, you will get that focal point. Whether you're nearsighted, farsighted, it gives you, uh, allows you to see in the distance or in the near, or some people they do a, um, a mid-range and it allows you to see like your mid-range or your computer range, but only one focal point. We also have multifocals. Multifocals is a term that encompasses all the types of different types of multifocals, whether it's a bifocal, which has two focal points, it's got a line on it, it's a visible line where you see distance and then you have your close range. You have trifocals where you've got three different lines and you've got your distance, a segment for the intermediate, your computer area, and then a segment to read from. Those are there and they're invisible lines. And then we have the most common, which is the progressive lens or a no line bifocal as it's commonly uh, referred to. A progressive lens allows you to gradually change the focus from distance to near and it's a narrow channel that your eye will naturally follow. Uh, Christine mentioned at the beginning that there uh, is a lot of bad rap about progressives. There's literally hundreds of progressives on the market and the newer generation, the higher definition, the better quality lenses, um, and the ones that are digitally surfaced or digitally made, um, minimize a lot of that and minimize a lot of the distortion, minimize a lot of the um, feelings that you're falling or uh, that you're blind, uh, have uh, peripheral vision distortions. Next, we have your task, your computer, or your uh, online lenses. This is what the presentation is about today. This is what we're gonna concentrate on today. So I'll get into that a little bit later. Task allows you to basically do your task and mainly it's in the intermediate range, which is what we're all doing right now, um, whether we're home or not. Then we can get into sports, sports glasses, uh, swimming goggles, safety glasses. Uh, all of them are available in prescription. The worst thing a person who has a prescription and loves to swim is to get into the water and not be able to see. Um, on land, without your glasses, you know how you function. A person who has 20-20 vision and they go underwater, open their eyes up, and you know how distorted things are down there. So not only visually, but your depth perception is very distorted. So swimming goggles are available with your prescription. And lastly, we'll get into specialty coatings. And specialty coatings will include um, everything from anti-reflection coating and scratch-resistant coatings, ultraviolet protection, tints, polarizing, and blue light filters. If anyone has any questions, feel free to um, just unmute yourself and ask. Okay, this is what a typical day is like for some people, not everybody, but some people are a typical week. Uh, your favorite things to do. A lot of people like to go running, walking, um, going to the gym. They play some sports, maybe they do some cycling or they play soccer or baseball, uh, work, um, mobile phones. I know everybody has them, even children nowadays have their mobile phones. They're on the TV. Uh, TVs are actually a lot larger than they used to be. Our rooms are getting smaller, so we're sitting closer to the TVs. And there's a lot of blue light that comes off the TV screens that we're not aware of. And then, of course, computer screens, computers, tablets, um, any sort of uh, digital device basically uh, emits all this blue light that we're taking in throughout the day. And we're using multiple screens. I know myself just doing this presentation right now, I've got two screens open in front of me. Then you have your everyday pair. This is your go-to pair. You put them on in the morning, you take them off at night. It allows you to function throughout the day. And then your sun protection, where you want to protect your eyes with the, with the ultraviolet protection. This is really extremely important. Um, getting a sunburn is a real thing. Burning your eyeballs is real. I know people who have um, baked in the sun without wearing any glasses. 
and um, it is a real thing. So I strongly recommend you get a good pair of sunglasses with ultraviolet protection, especially those with blue eyes. Anyone that's fair and blue eyes, you take in a lot more um, ultraviolet and are more susceptible to burns. Just the way you would protect your skin, protect your eyes with the proper UV. And not all UV is created equally, so keep that in mind as well, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay, so now we're starting to talk about our task lenses. Task lenses come, come in basically three types, and I'm going to really um, play it down here. And I'm giving them generic names. Every company out there, every lens manufacturer makes a task lens, and they all have their own branded names for it. Basically, they come in three different um, types. The first, and the, most, the first one that I'm going to talk about is your near or your device. This lens, so all task lenses, first of all, give you two focal points. It gives you near range, which is your reading about 14 inches away, and then arm's length away, which is where your computer screen would be. A person who wears the near or the device lens, it allows them to see one meter to three feet away. So this is great for somebody who's working at a desk all day long. Um, I often uh, speak to people that are sitting on a computer for more than, uh, more than two hours a day. So anyone who's on a computer for more than two hours a day, I strongly recommend you get yourself a pair of task lenses. A lot of them complain by the end of the day and they're complaining about shoulder pain, neck pain, headaches, eye strain, and they think it's because they're sitting on a computer all day and the computer is causing this. Yes, the computer is causing it, but it's easily resolved with the right pair of glasses. When you're wearing a progressive lens, the progressive is measured when you're wearing them so that when you look straight ahead, you're looking through your distance portion. As you are looking in the near portion, you will naturally have to raise your chin up higher. I know you can, you can see me right now. This is really the posture that you're using. By the end of the day, doing this for more than two hours, you're gonna end up with a headache, sore neck, sore shoulders, and you wanna see your massage therapist or a chiropractor. All of this can be resolved by wearing the right pair of glasses. Again, you don't wear your heels to the gym, so wear the right pair of glasses for the work that you do. Going back to the near device lenses, this is great for someone who's at a desk all day long, who doesn't necessarily have to get up. They, they go to the office or they have home office and they sit at their desk and basically they're at their desk for extended periods of time and not having to look up or look out at someone walking through their room. Does anyone have any questions so far? All right, I'll go on to the next type of task. The next task lens is gonna be the workspace or your desk. This works in the same way, however, the range is longer. It gives you two meters or up to six feet. This is ideal for anyone doing intermediate work. And it's not only sitting at your desk, this is anybody that's doing anything in the intermediate. This is great for people who are in the kitchen baking who need to um, get all their ingredients and everything because you're baking, you're not baking at a very close range. Um, you are uh, mixing ingredients and, and stuff at a close range, but you're also reaching for ingredients that, are, that may be up top or uh, up to six feet away. And also for anyone who is at an office and they have to have meetings at an office where someone comes in and a client comes in and sits in front of you, you're able to talk with them and see them clearly without removing your glasses. It allows you to have good range up close so that your screen and anything you're typing, your reading material is, is uh, clear and also um, up to six feet away. So if someone were to sit uh, across you, um, people who work in a bank uh, and they have clients coming in, Anyone that's doing consultations, this will work great for you guys. And lastly, we're gonna talk about the room or the studio lens. This is my favorite type of lens because I feel like a lot of us can wear this uh, and it, it gives you a lot more room to, to wear them and to function. This, is a, uh, this allows you up to 12 feet or four meters away. So it allows you to function in a room. So those who work from home, this is fantastic because you can get up, go to the bathroom, grab a coffee without me taking your glasses off. You can actually function around your room. Um, I don't, none of these are good for driving. It does not give you the 20, 20 distance vision that you require for driving. However, this is fantastic for people who are working in, um, in a home. It's also great for people who are doing presentations or working in a boardroom. If you're doing boardroom presentations where you've got a large table with maybe about 20 people sitting here and you're doing a presentation, 
This will allow you to see your computer screen, but it will also be able to look at the people sitting at the, in the boardroom uh, up to about 12 feet away. This is also ideal for doctors. Doctors, as we know, when we go visit them, they are in a small office and they're usually on a computer because they're taking all your details. The client or the patient is sitting maybe about four feet away, but then the doctor has to get up and leave that office, perhaps to go into another office for another waiting patient or to go into the waiting room to call someone. So this allows them to maneuver around the office without having to remove their glasses. It's also great for home, homemakers. If you're at home, it allows you to do all your cooking, your cleaning, uh, watch TV as well, because most TV screens are not more than 12 feet away. Um, so this, I, I find that, uh, I actually wear these ones and I, I wear them uh, when I'm working and it, it works great for me. Any questions so far? If we're done with the task part, does anyone have any comments or anything? I, I have a question. Like, how many yes. pairs of glasses should someone have? <laughs> um, yeah. That's a great question. I'd just say you can never have too many pairs of glasses. How many pairs of shoes do you have, Christine? Yeah. Well, the thing is, okay, so when I used to have my glasses currently uh, transitioned to sunglasses, and uh, when I had two different pairs, because I wanted different um, frames, I would forget them all the time. So I'd walk out with my sunglasses, I'd get to the office, and I'd only have my sunglasses for the entire day. I'm like, sorry, I'm not too cool for school. I, I forgot my regular, because I literally would walk around. It was kind of embarrassing. So that's my challenge, is remembering, oh my gosh, what, you know, to take the glasses and have them. So. So that's a common problem. Okay. Um, you can never have too many pairs and really it depends on your needs. And, it, and like I said, it, there, is, there is a budget factor as well. So maybe you don't wanna do all of them at once. You can do them. I have clients who call me every couple of months and they, they get another pair depending on the task that they're doing. And then they build their eyeglass wardrobe slowly, right? Glasses are a fashion statement. Yeah. Um, those who have seen me with my glasses always remember me for the funky stuff that I wear. I think Zancy has a question. Yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, you know, my eyes are really, really bad. And yeah. ideally, I need two pairs of glasses because if something happens to this pair, I'm completely pooched because I can't see anything without yeah. them. Um, but, you know, it comes down to the financial thing because my lenses on their own are so expensive. The, you know, the cost of the frames is immaterial when you're paying a thousand dollars for your lenses. I totally get it. And I'm glad you asked that question. Those who depend on their glasses, I highly recommend you get a spare pair. And it was never more apparent than during COVID when everything was shut down and I kept getting calls saying, I broke my glasses, can you help? So I did do, um, uh, as an essential worker, we were allowed to do emergencies only. And I did help quite a number of people um, who could not see, could not function because they only had that one pair. So it was a lesson learned for many. And I strongly recommend it. You know, you might not want to do it at the same time, but space it apart and budget for it because these are your eyes. You can't function without them if something does happen to your glasses. But getting back to Christine, yes, um, glasses, it's, it's great to have a wardrobe because then you can change things up. Uh, depending on where you're going, how are you feeling, uh, what mood you're in. But also um, those who, like if you had a task pair and you worked in an office, you would just leave them at the office and then you wouldn't forget. Um, on, my, um, on my Facebook page and stuff, I was, um, and during Mother's Day, I was selling these uh, very cute um, eyeglass pouches, which go on your belt loop or they go on your purse. And I keep mine on my purse because I forget as well. I forget to switch them. So one pair always stays in there, my sunglasses or my clear pair, depending on what I'm doing, where I'm, where I'm going. And then I always have it with me because it's right in my purse. Number one, I always have it with me. Number two, I don't get, they don't get lost. And number three, they don't get scratched because now I'm taking care of them. So um, I, I agree, yeah. like, I, because I permanently have to wear them and mm -hmm. something happened after kids where I can't wear contacts anymore. And quite honestly, I feel, I personally feel so used to seeing me with my glasses on. I don't think I'm me without them. <laughs> so I, I love to change it up. I, I try to get two pairs when I go. So I try to look for who's having, you know, the sale on the two for ones because I like to change it up. I wish I had, 
I wish I had more <laughs> of an allowance to get more elaborate with them. I'm glad, I'm glad you brought that up. One of the first videos that you talked about that you watched in the beginning that I did at, uh, during COVID was stop wearing your contact lenses. Contact lenses are great. It's a great alternative to glasses, but they are very drying on the eyes. And if we're home right now, give your eyes a break and let's not wear the contacts, especially with COVID and all the, uh, the transmissions because you're using your hands to put these things into your eyes and take them out. And COVID is transmitted through the eyes as well. They don't talk about that. They always say the mouth and the nose, but COVID is transmitted through the eyes as well. And there have been cases that have been reported where it was transmitted through the eyes. So um, give your eyes a break and not wear your contacts. All right, we'll just move on. Okay, so just like we talked about the um, lenses, there's task-specific coatings as well. And we're going to start with sunglasses since it's a gorgeous day here. It's 25 degrees and I can't wait to get out. Um, sunglasses, they come in a variety of shapes, colors, price points. And price points is what I really want to focus on. Um, the cheaper glasses doesn't necessarily mean that you are getting the protection that you need. Sometimes it could be worse for your eyes than not wearing anything. And I'll tell you why. Um, UV is not regulated in Ontario. So anyone can put a sticker on that says 100% UVA uh, or UVB. However, it's not regulated. So you don't know unless you put it into a spectrometer, you don't know exactly how much um, coverage that you're getting. And number two, if the UV is not adequate, you're wearing a dark lens. When you wear a dark lens, your pupil opens up, which means you're allowing more light in. And if the protection isn't there, you are, chances are um, you are going to get um, burn your eyeballs, really. Uh, but also, the longer you're exposed to daylight and sunlight, you're, the longer it takes you to adapt to nighttime. So those who have trouble focusing at nighttime, well, it's probably because you've been exposed to so much light throughout the day that you're um, I'm going to get technical right now. It's the rods and cones that um, help you see daylight and, and, and nighttime. And it takes them a little bit longer to process. So the longer you're exposed, if those who spend a day on the beach, uh, you'll notice at nighttime, it's a little bit harder to focus. And that's because you're taking in all that UV and all that light. Tints, um, there's permanent tints. Um, and I've got three colors on here. Tints come in, they come in all different colors. And there's a fashion tints and then there's purpose tints. The three most common are brown, green, and gray. And they come in at different intensities. You can go from a light tint, uh, which we say is usually about 35 to 40%. And that blocks out to 35 to 40% of the light entering the eye. And then we get into a medium tint, which is about 60, 65%. And then a true sunglass, which is 85%. I don't recommend anything higher than 85%. Um, because it is too dark for, for, vision, for vision. The brown lenses are great for our winters that we have in Ontario because it can get very overcast and hazy. You still have that haze, so you need something to protect you. However, um, it's not bright enough to wear a dark lens. And brown is a happy lens. It'll make everything brighter and, and make things look good and just a, a feel good lens. For my golfing friends, golf um, brown lenses are great for golf because it gives you a lot of contrast vision with the, the ball against the, the green grass. So those who golf, brown is the, the, the lens to remember. Then we have green. Green is a general purpose lens. It allows you to kind of just do everything generally. And the most common is gray, often referred to as a black lens, but it is gray. There's no, there's no such thing as a black lens. And gray is the most neutral. So a lot of people like to wear gray, especially in a bright day, because it's going to um, really cut out the brightness. But gray does not distort your colors when you're looking through it. So when you're driving with a gray lens, your traffic lights, your red is going to look red, the green is going to look green. There is no distortion. And, and those are permanent tints. They don't, um, they don't lighten or darken or anything like that. That's how they, that's just, they stay that way. Then we get into polarized. Polarized is a premium sun product. And it's the, an application that's applied to the lenses. It's a coating process. And it eliminates all the glare. So a lot of times we're wearing sunglasses, but we're still squinting and we think our sunglasses are not good. Sunglasses cut the brightness. Polarized cuts the glare. So if you think of being at the beach, 
and you've got your um, your water or the, the ocean or lake and the sun is shining on it you get that glare when you're wearing polarized lenses it actually cuts that glare allows you to see into the water surface it's a great lens for people who are driving because if you're driving and there's a car in front of you the sun strikes that car the metal of the car you get that bounce back glare this is going to eliminate all of that so polarized is amazing for anyone that's doing water sports snow sports or driving for long distance any questions on tints All right, so this is what Christine was talking about, photochromic or transitions lenses. These are changing lenses. They go from light to dark as you move from indoors to outdoors. And um, the generic term is photochromic and there is a branded uh, term and it's, uh, it's a branded lens, it's transitions. It's a company that actually does photochromic and they specialize in it. Um, for those who are thinking of getting it, I highly recommend you this is the one time I'll say stick to a brand because they, they vouch for their lenses. I've seen photochromic generic lenses. They don't always change color uniformly or they are a little bit blotchy. Transitions, you'll have no problems. They'll also transition or change color a little bit faster and a little bit more unique, uh, uniformly. Transitions um, also change not only from the brightness of the sun, they have to be UV activated. So you have to be outside, the UV has to hit them for them to change color, but they're also temperature sensitive, which is some, what some, most people don't know. In the winter, you'll find that your transition lenses will be a little bit darker just because it's colder out there. So the colder it is and the sunnier it is, the darker your lenses will be. Transitions has just introduced um, a new generation. So these are changing faster. They're more uniform. Um, they're great. I've just did a presentation on those and those are fantastic. Um, so if you are looking for something that does a multi-purpose, it's great. The one drawback to transitions is everyone thinks that they can get one pair and they do everything with it. Transitions will not change color in the car. So if you're looking for glasses that allow you to drive into the sun, it's not going to work for you unless you've got a convertible and you know we only get summer three months out of the year or so um, i don't think that's going to work very well for most people transitions are great for um, everyday wear so a lot of my clients have transitions for their everyday pair and then they have a special pair of sunglasses for when they're outside and they need that added protection but if you're outside and you're walking a dog and you're at home you want to go out for a walk or you want to walk the dog Instead of switching glasses, this works great because then you don't even have to remember to switch your glasses. They just change color when you go outside and change back when you come in. And lastly, I'm gonna talk about blue light filters and this goes hand in hand with the task lenses specifically um, because blue light is, is it's a real buzzword right now. It has been for quite some time uh, since all of us are using our gadgets uh, and it has become more common since, um, since COVID because everybody's at home on their gadgets. But uh, blue light and digital eye strain is not just a phenomenon, it's a real thing. It is a real thing. People are experiencing a lot of eye fatigue and stuff because they're not wearing the proper um, filters on their glasses. So on your digital devices, there's um, a blue light that's yeah, emitted off of them, just the way a UV is emitted off of the a light spectrum in the sun. The filters, although they're called blue light, they filter out the blue light. They are not blue. It's a very clear lens. I'm actually wearing it on mine. You don't see it. It's just like an anti-glare coating. And I recommend that anybody on a computer screen or gadgets um, do get the coating. Quick question for you. I, uh, I have the blue filter on mine as well. Uh, so does my youngest who wears glasses. Perfect. I'm concerned about my boys who um, who don't wear glasses but are on their devices a lot. They're gaming, they're hanging out with friends, they're attending classes, they're on Google Chrome. Should they actually have a fake glasses with the blue filter? Absolutely. And I do that a lot. So thank you for bringing that up. Uh, those who have perfect vision, um, children or adults who have perfect vision and don't wear glasses, get a pair of glasses, but get a good pair of glasses. Um, there are a lot of inexpensive ones on the market. Again, there's no regulation. So you don't know the type of um, blue light filter you're getting or how much blue light filter you're getting. And you can't test it. So I recommend going to a reputable place and getting it. You just get plain glasses and it's a fashion accessory. I do them for children all the time. I go into the homes and I'm talking to the parents and then they ask me about the children and I'm like, yes, I can do them for them. So we do glasses for children. It's a plain optical lens that has an anti-glare coating as well as a blue light filter. And then they're protected from all their gadgets because now they're using computers when they're actually in school as well. Hey Zara. Yes. 
How do you know if you have uh, blue light filter glasses, even though they tell you this is it, but there's no way to tell them. So is there a way to, like you can at home figure out how they are blue, blue light filter? No, there actually isn't a way you can figure it out. You'd have to trust your, um, your optician. Um, some of the manufacturers do provide insert cards that tell you that your glasses have the blue light filter. Um, so I would, I would want to think that my optician colleagues are honest and when they say you're getting a blue light filter, you're actually getting a blue light filter. And there's different qualities of blue light filter, it, just the way there's different qualities of anti-glare coating. There's always a good, better and a best scenario. I've seen some really inexpensive ones um, and they look blue. They, you can see them. They, they're not very flattering when someone looks at you. And then there's um, a clear a blue light filter, which is the one that I use uh, for most of my clients because it is a better coating. You don't see it when it's on. Um, when you're wearing it, it looks very clear and people can't even tell that you're wearing it. Uh, and it's very comfortable and, and visually appealing. Yeah. Does that okay. answer your Thank question? You. Yep, it does, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thanks for joining. You're joining from Calgary, right? Yes. Thank I got you. some more questions afterwards for you. Sure, <laughs> sure. All right, so we're gonna get into the benefits of the blue light filter. The main reason is we're on our gadgets. Uh, so if you think back to even 10 years ago, uh, we went to work, we came home, we shut off and that was it. Now we're going to bed with our gadgets. We have our phones by our bed. We have our iPads by our bed. Some people have their, tab, um, their you know, laptop, uh, laptops by their beds. So we're taking in this blue light all day long. And what blue light does is it disrupts our sleeping pattern. Our circadian rhythm is our body clock that regulates our sleep patterns, our wake and sleep cycle. And when we don't shut off like we traditionally did at five or 6 p.m., um, and then the body prepares for sleep, it slows down and the circadian rhythm kicks in and it prepares for sleep. Because we're not shutting down and we're taking in this added blue light right till the end, our circadian rhythm is all over the place and thinks that we're awake. So those who have trouble falling asleep or staying asleep, more importantly, many will fall asleep, but they'll keep waking up throughout the night and won't know why. It's because our, circ our circadian clock hasn't regulated because it's taken in so much blue light, it thinks we're actually awake. Oh, I That's have the can, I ask a quick, can I ask a question here? Yes. So, okay, this is interesting. Um, are you hearing from parents about their kids who are, uh, either not able to fall asleep or waking up often out of kind of out of nowhere where I'll, I'll give you an example. My middle child was my best sleeper. I could put him to bed and, and he would sleep the whole night. It was wonderful. And then I guess about two years ago, something changed and he's constantly waking up through the night. Uh, are you hearing from parents that th this could be a, an issue? Yes. Yes, I am. I am hearing it. Um, and it is a real thing. So number one, make sure that there's nothing else going on. Um, you know, there could be other, there's a number of reasons why a child doesn't sleep through the night, but um, I can help you with the blue light part. Any other gadgets, I know um, on the phones and on the tablets, if you go into your settings, there is a blue light filter on them. Turn it on. You can, you can time it, you can put it on a timer where it turns on at a certain, um, certain time. So if you want to put it on at 5 p.m. and then um, it, it's on for the rest of the night, or just leave it on all the time because there's no harm in not taking it. I mean, there's more good not taking it in than, than having it on a timer. I have it on, on all my gadgets, on my phone and my iPad. So that's number one. And then number two, added protection, get them a pair of glasses and see if that helps. Number three, don't let them have gadgets in their room because of, Nine times out of 10, if they wake up in the middle of the night, they're reaching for their phone or their tablet. Yeah, so they don't- And then you're awake. They don't have the tablets um, in their room in the middle of the night, at nighttime, but I definitely know we're not shutting off with enough time for the brain and everything to settle. Uh, it's becoming increasingly more difficult with this lack of routine. I know I, you think we'd be in a routine now after three and a half months. No. Um, <laughs> But yes, okay, thank you for that. So thank it's also, it's not only your gadgets, it's your TV as well. So people watch TV right ah, up until they go to bed, okay. right? And like I said, TVs are like larger than life now, right? Sometimes it's the size of your whole wall, right? No, people can't get any bigger. And so the bigger the TV, the more light you're taking in. And we watch TV right up until bedtime. 
So, you know, maybe about an hour or two before bed, shut off all your gadgets. Maybe they can read a book or journal or do something a bit more productive and calming that will set set themselves up to, to sleep. The other thing that blue light filter does is reduce eye strain from, um, so digital eye strain is, is a real thing. Um, you are taking in all this light. And when we're looking at our gadgets, our eyes are actually converging. So they're coming together. And when we look in the distance, they diverge. So they're looking straight ahead. So the muscles are constantly in a converged position, which causes strain. And then it causes dry eyes as well, because we're not blinking as often. The more we converge and, and stare at a screen, we're not blinking. And in one of my videos, if you guys go on my Facebook page, there's a couple of videos I did about eyewear tips. And one of the things I talk about is the uh, reducing eye strain by the 2020 principle. So every 20 minutes, take a break from your gadgets, look 20 feet away for 20 seconds, or blink 20 times, looking straight at 20 feet away for 20 seconds. It lubricates the eye and gives your eyes a break from the gadgets um, and just kind of loosens the muscles. It's like sitting cross-legged for you know an hour. You get up and your legs are all numb and tingly. You got to shake them out. So you're doing the same thing with your eyes, but you're doing it every 20 minutes. Get into that habit. The other thing is those who use a mouse, click and blink. Every time you um, click, remember to blink. And that'll get, get into that habit of clicking and blinking. It keeps your eyes lubricated and reduces some of that strain. And thirdly, now we're finding out doctors are talking about macular degeneration, which is um, a disease that does happen to some people um, in their older years. But we're finding out that the blue light is actually increasing or speeding up that or or causing um, an increased risk of developing macular degeneration in your in your later years. Okay, so I'm coming towards the end of my presentation. So those um, who have listened to me, thank you and for asking all the questions, thank you so much. I do have an offer for anyone, I I know it's for MOB members, but anyone who has participated in the presentation today, if you are wearing single vision lenses, then complimentary blue light filter. So for the children who just want glasses, I will do a complimentary blue light filter for them. Um, And then those who wanna get into the task lenses, I'm gonna give it to you at 50% off. So task lenses cost pretty much uh, the same as a progressive would because it is, it is the multifocal. And uh, we are offering it um, for the members who have participated for a half price. And the offer will end at the end of July. So just uh, shoot me, I, I know Christine is gonna put my contact information up and I'll get a list of everybody who has participated. And uh, you guys can reach, reach me and feel free to reach out to me. I hope that helps and I hope that uh, gives you some sort of incentive to actually go and uh, get yourself a pair of task glasses. Is that right? Sorry. Sorry, Um, go ahead. I spoke to my husband last night about what we talked about yesterday for his, um, for work, having the medium focus and the near focus and then the distance, like the clear for the distance with the blue light filter and he's on board. Oh, fantastic. And now I'm thinking I should get the blue light filters for my younger son because he has a lot of problems staying asleep. Sure. Yeah. So we can we can discuss that. And I know we'll just book an appointment for your husband. I'd love to come in and I style him and we'll talk about how we can help uh, the children at home as well. I think you had a question. Yeah, I did. Zara. Mm -hmm. So I recently got these guys. Yes. And uh, after visiting my my doctor and he suggested I get, I think he called it intermediate progressives or something like that. Yes. Um, And the goal is uh, to use the glasses so that I can look at my computer monitors Mm -hmm. and then uh, move my eyes move down to the keyboard. Yes. But what I've been finding, so I've had these for two weeks. This is my first time I'm ever getting into glasses and stuff like this. But what I'm finding is that the the right eye sometimes i find the keyboard getting a little bit blurry with the one eye only with the one eye only so does that mean the readings are off it could be so lenses have to be measured uh, very specifically and this is why i don't understand how people buy stuff online because you don't have a professional actually sitting there measuring things for you but it could be adaptation it does take a couple of weeks to get used to the lens design it could be the fit if they're not sitting properly on you. And then thirdly, it could be the measurements could be off. So um, I would suggest 
making sure that they fit you comfortably. They're sitting in the correct position on your nose and you are using them correctly. And if all of that fails, then just have your optician double check them, double check the measurements to make sure that the focal points are centered in the lens correctly. Okay. So Amin is actually wearing his first pair of task glasses. So good on you. <laughs> Yes, I know we had yeah. a consultation over the phone yeah. about this, and, and yeah. uh, does it work? And you're getting your, you're seeing your your screen as well as um, your reading material. Yeah, I think for the most part, um, it is um, the, the the where I got the glasses from. They did say give it, you know, two weeks to a month to get kind of used to them. Okay. Uh, because I'm new at this, so like sometimes when I turn my head, yeah. I can kind of see a wavy thing happening, right? So exactly. Yeah. So, so you do I think, get I used think, to them. And, and, and like I said, there's, there's lots of different lenses available and uh, different brands make different designs. Um, yeah. you, you basically, you get what you pay for. So the more, of the, more, the more advanced the technology behind the lens, the less the distortion. But there is distortion in every lens. If someone tells you that they've got a progressive or a task lens that has zero distortion, not true. It's not okay. available. There's no such thing. You cannot, you physically cannot manufacture a lens with zero distortion having more than one focal point. There are lenses that are better that have minimized distortion. And as you get used to them, you won't even realize that you have distortion. Like I'm wearing mine now and I, I, I mean, I can look anywhere and uh, I'm okay with it. It's, it's a matter of getting used to them. It's like getting a new pair of shoes and they hurt you for the first couple of weeks. Yeah. And then yeah. they're the most comfortable things ever. Right. So yeah. same thing. Yeah. Okay. And now, uh, fantastic presentation i hope i can get thank a recording you. of it thank you so i would love questions comments feedback um on 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 the content as well as the delivery so if anyone wants to ask me anything please go ahead or send me a pm um and also if you are enjoying these types of presentations let me know what topics you'd like me to talk on and i know Everyone talks about frames because fashion is, you know, it, it's everywhere and it's fun. And lenses sometimes are not as fun and can be a little bit dry and boring. So I try to make it more animated so that you guys would have uh, something more visually appealing to look at while I, while I talked about lenses. Great presentation, Sarah. Thank you. I did, I did have a question actually. Um, yeah. Is it true that the longer you wear glasses, like over time, your eyes start to sink in to your head? No, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> I think that's just a number of factors, age, one of them, but I don't think that has nutrition probably more than glasses. Okay. Anyone else? I'd love a closet filled with glasses so every day I could change. I love it. I, change I, I wish everyone had a wardrobe of glasses. <laughs> and you, know, you, slowly, you slowly build it. I, I understand. Uh, I mean, there, it is, there is a cost. The challenge, the challenge with slowly building is that, well, for me anyway, my eyesight keeps getting worse. So my prescription keeps changing. I wish there was a way we could pop the lenses in to the different frames, you know, and have like five frames with the same lens. Pop it in, pop it out. You have to come up with that and, and market it. You know, there, there's these shoes now where you can take the heel off and just put the heel <laughs> on to the different. <laughs> yeah, or, or watch this. We work on that. You market yes. it, you find it, and I'll help sell it for you. There is, there is interchangeable, but you know, you have to be really careful because the lenses, like Amin was talking about the measurements off, they're measured for every particular frame yeah. and how it sits, how that frame sits on you. Yeah. So every frame sits differently, and so I the mean, measurements will vary. And I really wouldn't want the same frame. I, I love the cheap, the small, the round, the, you know, yeah, love the cheap. Exactly. Shape. And there is a shape for every face. Um, yeah. I know a lot of people say I can't wear this particular shape, but there is a shape for every face. Um, and yeah, no, building a wardrobe is great. But you can always, I mean, if the frame is still in good condition, you can always just change the lenses on them. But an average prescription is good for two years. So you are getting two, two years of, of wear from a, a particular pair, pair and sometimes even bit, a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Your prescription hasn't changed. And prescriptions do stabilize. They do stabilize. Right now, um, we're probably at an age where our reading is going and it's going to keep increasing every couple of years until it stabilizes. It'll come to a stage where it stabilizes and then you can start building your wardrobe and not having to change the Do you know what time. age that happens? The stabilization happens? Do you know what age that happens? It's it's different from every for everybody, depending on your distance prescription and the correction that you have. Mm -hmm. um, I will tell you, being in the field for um, 
as long as I have been. When I started, I was doing progressives. Um, at that time, uh, I was 25 years younger, so it was for old people. <laughs> um, and, and there would be older people coming in and, 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 and I, I'm, I'm serious about this people in their late forties and fifties coming in for bifocals and progressives. And now with everyone using their gadgets, I've got people in their thirties coming in. So we are using our eyes very differently than we did in the past. And it's so much more important to take that we take care of them because we only have one set. Yes. So there's my contact information. If anyone has any questions or comments or would like to ask any other questions that was, wasn't covered today, feel free to reach out to me. So if um, I know that during COVID, I've discovered that when I put my glasses down and I forget where they are, that I get anxious because I, I can get through most of the day without them. But then I, if I need to go out of the house to drive, I need them on my face. And also I find my eyes get tired just from the fact that I, I can't see quite as well. So would you suggest getting another another pair, another pair of the same, or would you suggest getting a task specific thing, specific pair as a second pair? I would really want to acknowledge your needs and, and really, really look at that and see what the needs are. If you already have one pair that's doing everything, then you might want to get a task pair because that'll allow you to do something a little differently. And if you're working from home, then you might be wearing that pair more often and then uh, wearing the other pair. And then, yeah, getting a separate pair all together because then you're getting different styles as well. Okay. And, and for some if, people, the task won't work. Some people, a progressive works great just with everything they're, they're doing. So then you get, you know, multiple pairs of progressives. Yeah. So, um, unfortunately, my, my uh, prescription, my last pres prescription got, um, it got left in the back of my car and it got something spilled on it. So it's no longer legible. <laughs> you know what? I, um, sh uh, you might be able to answer this, but I lost mine. Uh -huh. And if you just call the office, exactly, uh, they will for free. They will email it to your um, wherever you're buying your glasses. But if you oh, need, they to will copy. <coughs> yeah. But if you need another, you don't have to spend that ten twenty bucks to get <laughs> so, an extra script. Well, if you need a copy, they charge you. But if you okay. if you send it to a, an office, not Top Interest, I believe. Well, for me, who I was working with, they they emailed it for free. So um, I'm going to I'm going to actually answer that for you. Um, all optometrists are different and I've heard everything from free to charging. Um, when you call for your prescription, first of all, when you go to an optometrist to get your prescription, it is your right to leave with that prescription. Some of them will hold it back so that you go back to the clock. That prescription belongs to you. So number one, make sure you leave with the prescription. And number two, if they are charging you to email it, I had a client, um, the optometrist wanted $50 during COVID Holy crap. to email it to them. That's terrible. All I need is the doctor's name and number and your contact information and I can get it for you. They have to give it to me as a, as a professional. They have to give it to me at no charge. So oh, excellent. Uh, if you guys excellent. are having trouble, um, just give me a call and I'll, I'll be happy to do that for you. I think we need give to you a set, little up bit of money. A, set up an appointment. Sure, yeah, give me a call yeah. and we'll, we'll okay. set something up. Great. Nancy, you had a question? I was just going to say, can I tell my story about what happened with me yesterday? Yes, can you husband? please? Okay, so um, I am, it, my eyesight is incredibly poor to the point where if I take my glasses off and put them down somewhere, I can't see where they are. <laughs> and so when that happens and I can't, you know, find them by blindly groping for them, I'm afraid to move in case I sit on them or stand on them because then I can't see at all ever. So I often call my younger son in to find my glasses for me and he's used to coming and doing this. And yesterday I was doing a task and I had my glasses off and I couldn't find them on my desk by groping around for them. So I call Evan in. Evan, can you come and find my glasses for me? So he got, he walks into the bedroom, stops dead, looks at me and goes, Mom, they're in your hand. And the task that I was doing that I couldn't see 
was I was actually cleaning my glasses lenses with the lens cloth and I couldn't see what I was doing well enough to determine whether they were getting clean or not. And so, you know, yesterday marks the official beginning of my mental decline. I am officially losing my mind. <laughs> so thank you for sharing that and made, made me laugh with that story yesterday. But it is true, a lot of my clients, if you're not wearing your glasses and you depend on your glasses and you don't have them on, you'll feel like your other senses are off. I know people who will say, I can't hear you because I don't have my glasses on. Yeah. And so it does, it does affect your other senses. If you're naturally um, don't have one of your senses, if you can't hear or, or whatever it is, naturally, it's, then your other senses are heightened. But if you depend on, on glasses that, and you don't wear them, you will find that your other senses are not heightened and you will you'll be like, I can't hear you. My, my sister-in-law, I think she's on, she does this all the time. And that's how I learned this is a real thing. I can't hear you because I don't have my glasses on. Right, Az? I, I, wow. both of the points you both made are so true. That happens to me. Or if I can't see someone's face, I have a hard time hearing too. I guess what I'm doing is lip reading without even knowing it. Well, we are, we use all our senses together. We don't realize how important it is and how much we rely on all five senses together. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Any other questions? Thank you so much. It was great Thank presentation. You. I really appreciate all